world and a dozen payloads planned for orbit. While SpaceX has launched several missions for the NRO, today's mission represents the first launch of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket procured directly under the National Security Space Launch, or NSSL, program. NSSL is a government launch acquisition program aimed at ensuring continued access to space for national security missions. The program is overseen and operated through U.S. Space Force's Space Systems Command, headquartered in Los Angeles, California. One thing to note, per the NRO's request, we will not be sharing any views from the second stage today, and we will be ending our webcast around the T plus eight minute mark, just after Falcon 9 touches back down onto land. We're almost at this eight minutes and 30 seconds. Hold authority communication check. Please respond with strength and clarity when pulled. Not OD. Loud and clear. PD. Loud and clear. Quick poll there, as we just heard, um, we're approaching T minus eight minutes. All systems continue to look good for an on-time liftoff. So for now, let's take a closer look at the rocket on your screen. Falcon 9 is our two-stage rocket standing at 230 feet or about 70 meters tall, roughly the height of a 20-story building. When it's fully fueled, it'll hold just over a million pounds of propellant that the vehicle will burn through in less than three minutes after liftoff. We began loading those propellants on both stages of the vehicle back at T minus 35 minutes. The bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. While it's designed to be reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment between flights, today will be the first flight for this particular booster. As you might be able to tell that um, it's shiny white paint of coat, uh, shiny white uh, coat of paint uh, can be clearly seen. There's no soot on this, on this booster. Uh, at the bottom of the first stage, there are nine Merlin engines that will get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The two stages will separate from one another. The second stage continues to orbit, while the first stage makes its way back down to Earth for its landing attempt at landing zone four, which is not too far from where it will lift off. And there you can see landing zone four on your screen now. If successful, this will be the first landing for this booster. It will also mark the 105th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. Now, as for the second stage, which we see there just under the payload fairing, uh, that will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC uh, about two and a half minutes into flight. It's this engine that will take the NROL-87 spacecraft to its intended orbit. At the moment, our payload today is safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you see there, the structure at the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellite from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of stage space... Stage one, fuel load is complete. All right, good news there. Uh, stage one fuel load has completed. Um, now, once we reach the vacuum of space, we'll jettison those fairing halves uh, while the second stage continues on to orbit. Just like our Falcon 9 booster, uh, today these fairing halves are also brand new and we will be attempting to retrieve them from the water once they make their way back to Earth. As I mentioned earlier, this mission is for the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO. The NRO is responsible for developing, acquiring, launching, and operating America's reconnaissance satellites, as well as operating associated data processing facilities in support of national security. These sophisticated systems are used to develop military targeting data, uh, support international humanitarian relief operations, and assess the impact of natural disasters. As a reminder, per the NRO's request, we will not be showing any views from our second stage today, and we will be ending our webcast around the T plus eight minute mark, uh, just shortly after Falcon 9 touches back down at landing zone four. So far, we are at T minus five minutes and uh, six seconds, and all systems remain go for an on-time liftoff. The range remains green and ready to support. As for the weather, as you can see by those views from Vandenberg Space Force Base, it's a gorgeous day for launch. We have basically 0% uh, probability of violation uh, with respect to weather rules for today. Um, the vehicle and payload continue to be healthy. In fact, the payload is now on internal power. And if for some reason today that we are unable to launch, we do have a backup window tomorrow at the same time. Next up, the trust structure there next to the vehicle known as- MD, CLD on countdown one. GMD. Let's say MD. 
is coming through the final status check. You and your team are go for launch and landing. MD and team are go for launch and landing. Copy. All right, we can see there that the clamp arms on the transporter erector or TE have now begun to open in preparation for retraction of the TE. This is one of the last major visual milestones that we have prior to launch. At this point in time, both the first stage and second stage um, are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen or LOX, as you often hear us call it. Uh, the white clouds that you see there on the side of the vehicle are normal. That's just that super chilled liquid ox, excuse me, that super chilled liquid oxygen um, coming into contact with the ambient air around the vehicle. The fuel is completely loaded on both first and second stage, and we're expecting uh, the first stage to wrap up its um, LOX loading in about 15 seconds at T minus three minutes and second stage will complete its locks loading at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, we'll hear a call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage one, lock load complete. All right, so stage one is now fully loaded with both all of its fuel and liquid oxygen. And uh, we're waiting for a second stage to wrap up that lock load. When we hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup, that means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin M1D engines and set for liftoff. Right now, the NROL 87 payload continues to be healthy on internal power, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. So we're about 20 seconds away from second stage LOX load completion. Everything looking really good. As you can see, there's not a cloud in sight. Typically at Vandenberg, we have some fog to deal with. So if you're local to the area, you're sure to see a beautiful liftoff and landing as we will be attempting to land back at landing zone four, which is about a thousand feet away from the launch pad. Stage two, lock load complete. All right, there we heard the call out. Stage two, lock load is complete. At this point in time, the vehicle will start venting the liquid oxygen, as you can see there on your screen. Um, the leftover liquid oxygen uh, basically left in the load lines. Look good for an on-time liftoff. MD is go for launch. Falcon is in startup. There we just heard mission director is go for launch and that the vehicle is in startup. The autonomous, excuse me, the onboard flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. We're now at T minus 25 seconds. Let's listen in to the final countdown. T minus 15. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff of L87. Go Falcon, go, go. Vehicles pitching down range. Nominal first stage chamber pressures.
We're now T plus 40 seconds into the NROL 87 mission. Falcon 9 is throttling down in preparation. Power and telemetry. In preparation for Max Q, which will take place at T plus 1 minute and 12 seconds. Max Q, of, of course, being the moment in which the vehicle experiences the highest amount of aerodynamic vehicle pressure. Supersonic. Beautiful views of the California coast there in the background. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out for Max Q. Everything looking good with stage one trajectory. Now in the next couple minutes, we have five events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and then the boost back burn. Main engine cutoff, as the start name suggests, we will throttle, or excuse me, we will shut down uh, all nine Merlin engines. The stages will separate. The first stage will actually flip over and conduct a boost back burn. Um, and that's what we have to do in order to fly the booster back towards land. And of course, during that time as well, we'll have second engine start one, where we will ignite the Merlin vacuum engine. Again, not a cloud in the sky, gorgeous liftoff from Vandenberg Space Force Base Space Launch Complex 4 East. First stage engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back startup. All right, there you saw all of those crystal clear, beautiful views. That first stage now is performing the boost back fairing burn. Separation. And, back pull, and there pull we heard the confirmed. call out that fairing separation um, has been confirmed. Unfortunately, we're unable to broadcast that at the request of our customer, um, but we were able to confirm the deployment of that. We're now three minutes into launch and the next milestones coming up include the conclusion of the boost back burn, which we see right there on your screen. And that will finish at T plus uh, three minutes and 15 seconds. Stage one boost back shut down. All right, there we heard call out that the boost back burn has completed. Our first stage will be attempting a land landing in just a few moments. One of the nice things about land landings is that we're not subject to ocean weather. Um, and it's pretty convenient to land the first stage uh, basically right next to where it lifted off from. However, our ability to exit, execute a land landing uh, really is dependent upon the customer's needs. Their mission trajectory and performance needed by the satellite is what determines if we can return to land. Most of the time, their requirements don't allow for a return to launch site, which is what we're performing today. Um, which is why we also developed the capability to land our first stages. Both vehicles on nominal trajectory. Good news there, both first and second stage um, reporting to have nominal trajectory. Um, so that's why we developed our ability to land our first stages out in the ocean with our drone ships. Now, in order to complete today's land landing, the first stage has two more burns left. Next up is the entry burn. And that's where we will reignite three of the Merlin engines on the first stage. That will help to slow the booster down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. That's a view there coming from inside the inner stage. We can see the, uh, the stage pusher there. Here we have a beautiful view. Um, I'm, I think that's probably one of the channel islands there on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, we can see two of the four hypersonic grid fins we deploy those um, shortly after the stages separate, and those grid fins help steer the vehicle during descent. You will also see, that right there we just saw one, like a, a puff of white gas. Uh, that is nitrogen gas from attitude control systems that help control the vehicle's orientation. So there we can see the booster is steering itself back to Vandenberg Space Force Base. piece of ice there on the left-hand side. Absolutely stunning views today, both of liftoff and 
our landing attempt. As I mentioned before, Vandenberg typically has quite a bit of fog, so it's more common to hear a launch than see one from Vandenberg. So for those that were able to catch it, uh, I'm sure it was a stunning sight. We are about 20 seconds away from the entry burn. Again, this burn is the second of three burns that we will be performing today. And this burn is designed to slow the vehicle down significantly. Both vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. So the booster is now basically coming through the thicker part of the Earth's atmosphere. So we're going to slow its velocity down with this entry burn. Stage one, entry burn, startup. There we can see that entry burn has begun and this will last for another few seconds. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And we can see that entry burn has concluded. The vehicle continues to steer itself for a precise landing back at landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base. The next burn we have is the landing burn. During the first stage landing burn, a single Merlin engine, the center engine, will relight and slow the vehicle stage down. Stage one is saved. If you look closely, you should be able to not only see our landing zone, but our launch site as well. Stage Again, two FTS has saved. The landing zone is pretty close to our, our launch pad. Shortly before the vehicle touches down. Stage one, landing burn, start up. All right, we can see the landing burn has begun. Landing zone coming into view for the first stage. Again, this is the first flight for this booster and first landing attempt. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And as you can see, a picture perfect stage landing one. of this first stage booster, its first flight and first landing. This booster will be prepared for reflight on another NRO mission later this year. This also marks our 105th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. As I mentioned earlier, at the request of our customer, the National Reconnaissance Office, we are concluding our webcast coverage early today. We would like to thank the N we would like to hear the NRO for entrusting us with today's launch. And a special thanks to the range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. For all those tuning in, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for our Starlink launch.